All right, Jeff Kramer again, and we're going to tie another deer hair bug. Uh, this one's going to be a what I call kind of a frog popper. We're going to use some Cohen's Creatures frog legs for the, the legs on the back of this thing. Uh, this is a little bit smaller bug than a lot of the bass bugs you see online. A lot of them are, are big. Uh, this is a size 6 Firehole 811. Uh, it's a size that I tend to fish more often than anything else, so since it's what I fish, it's what I tie. And we're going to start off with some 6 aught thread just because we don't need the GSP to tie down our legs. And these legs come in all white. And what I've done is taken a Sharpie and actually a highlighter and given these some color. So they end up being kind of a chartreuse. These the highlighter chartreuse on the belly. And then when you flip them over, I've got an olive green with just some, some black speckling on it. And a fun little trick with these legs. Uh, I think most people probably just tie them in by the full length of that tab. But like I said in some other uh, videos we've done, I like to have a nice bump back here for something that I can pack the deer hair against and get as much flare out as I can. So I will lay this down and give it's a little bit much. I will give a couple wraps there across the, the very back side of that tab. Advance my thread up to about the halfway point on it. And then I'll actually go ahead and take this and fold the top of that tab back. So we're just doubling it over. And then when you tighten down on that, you end up with a little bit bigger nub as your backstop for this fly. So then we're just going to go ahead and whip finish right in front of these legs. And we're going to switch back over to our gel spun thread. I don't use gel spun anywhere I don't need it, even on small little jobs like that. So we are going to start our 210 gel spun. Actually this is 200, this is the UTC. And get this in position right here. I like to give a half hitch where I want it to stay, uh, just so when I rotate the vise it's not going to be going anywhere. And we're going to start off by tying some chartreuse deer hair onto the belly of this fly. So we're going to take a clump, fairly generously sized, of chartreuse deer hair. And this is the only place on this uh, deer hair bug like this, on these poppers, that I will actually stack the deer hair uh, in a hair stacker to even the tips, is on this very first clump, because I like for my collar to be pretty symmetrical. The rest of the fly, it does not matter. And this first clump is actually the trickiest one to get in because you got to work around the hook point just a little bit. So the the coloration that I use on most of my deer hair bugs, especially my poppers, is kind of a belly, body, and barring uh, color scheme. So this is going to have a chartreuse belly, an olive body, and a black barring on this one. And I'm going to do an orange face. So I like the tips of the collar to come back to about that crook in the legs. So we're going to work this around the hook point a little bit, push it around. And then the hardest part is getting a grip on this stuff around the point. We want to try to get this to stay in place as best we can. And once you start to cinch down on it, you can keep it in place pretty well. So we're going to be careful when you wrap a head to do your chase wraps on this, because if you touch the hook point with much tension, you actually, it's the only time I've ever cut GSP in my life, the 200 or the 210, is if you are got a lot of thread tension and you touch the hook point, it will pop. So our next color that we're going to go to is going to be olive. And this is going to be a very healthy clump of deer hair. As I've said before, most people like to talk in pencils as far as how much deer hair they're putting on a fly. I tend to try to think of it more as like markers and sharpies. Because the more hair that you can get on here, the better dense body you're going to get. The more dense it is, the better it's going to float. And the longer it's going to last. He's take enough time to build it. I don't want him to be destroyed or sinking after a couple of fish. 
So again, once we get this olive hair, uh, this olive clump clean, we're going to stack it in our Peak Magnum stacker. So we're going to lay this right on top. We're going to stack this deer hair bug. We're not going to spin it. So we're going to try to keep all these colors in the position we want them. So I've got my olive in position there. I'm just going to pinch with my other hand and give two loose wraps over that. Start to cinch down. And once it starts to cinch down, I like to pinch from either side right up under that olive. Cinch down nice and hard. You can see we got a good flare out of that. And then without releasing your tension, give a chase wrap through that just to help hold that in place. And for as far as where the barring is going to go, if you take your finger and right on top of the hook, if you take your finger and push down and just kind of work it back and forth, you can create a little crater there where you're going to be sticking your clump of black for the barring. When it comes to the barring color, I don't do quite as big of a stack of hair. Um, I don't like to have a huge black bar on there. I just like to have kind of a little black oval on top. So. If I used a marker worth of hair on the the rest of the clumps on this bug, I'm going to use about half of that on the barring section. Again, we're going to clean it and stack it. And what you want to try to do with this clump of hair, this is going to be your, your black barring on top. You're going to try to get this centered right on top of the hook. Get the tips about the same length as the rest of your collar. And again, we're going to do two wraps over the top of it. Start to cinch down, pinch on the sides, give it a nice tug. And there is our first kind of station or stack of hair for this bug. Now the next step we're going to want to do is try to separate the olive from the chartreuse as best you can with your fingers and get your fingers to come in from the front and just kind of push back. And once you can do that and get a little crater formed there on the front, you can pull that hair back with your fingers, chase your thread up through it in front. And I like to give a couple of half hitches in here just to help make sure that that is not going to go anywhere. And if you wanted to add even more durability to this bug, this would be an excellent spot if you wanted to do it. I don't always do it, I'm not doing it right now, is to add a little bit of head cement to the front of those stacks of hair. I don't usually have too many durability issues without doing that, but I know a lot of guys that do. So once that's in place, we're going to go ahead and advance our thread a couple of spiral wraps up just to give us a little space in front of the last stack and another half hitch just to keep our thread where we want it. And we're going to repeat that process with the chartreuse, the olive, and the black. Okay, we've got our next stack of chartreuse hair. And we're going to pull back on the chartreuse right there just to kind of reveal where we want to stick this. Lay it onto the hook. Once again, two wraps loosely over it. Be careful not to trap too much with your thread. Usually I try to chase my fingers around with the thread just to keep from binding down too much. Give a nice strong pull on that, get that flared, and then again we're going to do a one or two chase wraps through it just to help lock that in place. All right, now we got our next stack prepared. We've got our, our olive. We're going to lay this, pull our olive and black back on the top, lay this right on top of the chartreuse that we just added in careful not to trap too much. Give two loose wraps over the top. Start to flare. Hold the size and give it a good tug. And again we're going to give another little chase wrap through there just to help hold that in place. And again we're going to take our finger and wiggle back and forth. And you can create that little crater where you're going to want to stick your black for the barring. If you roll this over you can see that little little dimple right there where we're going to stick our black. So now that we've got our black prepared, we're going to lay it right on top of that dimple. Chase our thread through, give two loose wraps over the top of that. And when you start to cinch down and see it start to flare, pinch from the sides, pull straight down, and it'll hold that spot right in place. You can see where the, the black stayed right on top. 
And again, we're going to go ahead and try to separate as best we can the olive from the yellow. Push back just a little bit to stack some. Compress some of that a little bit, pack it just a little. And we're going to chase our thread up through behind the hook eye and give a couple of half hitches. And as you can see, we're starting to run out of room on this little hook. So this is where we grab our fugly packer and we create a little bit of extra space. So with the fugly packer, we're going to come in here and we're going to basically pinch this right over the hook eye, hold from the back, push straight back, and you can see that we have added a little bit of extra space now. We compress that hair back, now we're going to have room to get our face tied in. See, there's just a tiny little bit of space there. The general motto that I have for deer hair bugs is if I don't feel like I have to struggle to get the last clump of hair in there, I probably didn't get enough. So we're going to switch to orange deer belly hair for the mouth of this fly, kind of the face. And we're going to start with a small clump on the bottom. Give again two loose wraps. Try to be careful as best you can to try not to trap too much hair. It's a real easy thing to do. If you kind of chase your fingers around, you can usually avoid it. And with a smaller clump of hair, you'll use just a little bit less thread tension to lock that down. And then we're going to give again a couple of, at least one chase wrap, maybe two, just to make sure that that stays put. Rotate it over. And we're going to repeat the process on the top. So we're going to pull back on our olive and black. Lay this in right over the hook eye. And when you go to cinch down this last one, it's usually good if you, instead of pulling straight down with the thread, pull back towards the tail just to make sure it locks in right on top of the hook point. Just flare that out and give a chase wrap through. And again, we have that fun process of locating our hook eye. I think I found it, and we're going to use our fugly packer to press back just a little bit. Clear just a little bit of space, and we're going to use our dead fly tool again to come in with a half hitch, put it right over the hook eye, tighten down on that, and seat our knot right behind the hook eye. Once that is done, we can go ahead and cut our thread. So now all of the tying portion is actually done. We've got all of our chartreuse on the belly, orange on the face, our olive for the body, and our black for the barring. Now we get to trim. Okay. All right, so now we're going to begin the trimming process on this bug. Again, our trusty Wilkinson sword, double-edged razor. The first cut on this one is going to go straight from the hook eye, which you can barely see right there, um, going straight back along the belly. And as usual, I try not to take it all at once. So if you just push straight back, and you will see this start to come off. You can see right there that you're getting a pretty flat cut on the bottom. I like the, the bottom to be pretty flat on these bugs. The more dense that you get deer hair, the easier it is usually with the belly hair to cut with the razor. So this is a nice fresh razor and you just basically just have to push a little bit on this blade and it will start to, to eat into it. So I'll work sequentially deeper, being careful not to go too far and get into the thread, which is never a good thing. And what you're going to try to do with trimming this belly out is you're going to, you can't see the hook point real well yet, but uh, you're going to want to make sure you free up as much of that hook gap as you can. So you can see there the hook point starting to show through a little bit. Just want to make sure we have plenty of hook gap available to stick that bass when he decides to annihilate this thing. So our next cut is going to go kind of square also right across the top. I'm going to end up tapering this down a little bit. 
uh, but I like to always start with a straight cut going back just because it kind of gives me a sense of where I'm at. So you can see there we're getting kind of a rectangular looking shape going right now. Um, once I get that cut I'll turn the bug on its side and I will start to cut back uh, kind of along the belly here. Not along the belly, along the side, but kind of following the belly color. And we're going to basically kind of box this thing up and make it kind of a square or a rectangular shape for right now. And then once we get that, we'll start the process of tapering it and rounding it off a little bit. So we've got that side. We're going to come down this side. You can see now we're getting a pretty boxy shape on that on that bug right now. Sometimes to be sure that you don't trim out too much of your collar once you get close to the collar and you don't want to cut into your collar hair, um, sometimes it is a good idea to come in with a pair of scissors and kind of trim out those butts that shoot out along the collar. Um, I usually just kind of do that kind of at a later step. So now that I've got that squared off a little bit, I'm going to start the process of tapering downward on the back to, to give us a little bit of a taper down towards the, the legs. And again, you don't want to cut too far into your collar. So you can see there that I'm starting to taper it down just a little bit on the back side. And once you start to build that taper a little bit, now I'm going to go in on the sides here and start to taper that down towards the collar also, just a little bit. If you're cutting a, trimming a deer hair bug like this and you start to notice that your blade isn't sliding through the deer hair and cutting it nice and effort, effortlessly like you want it to, that's because your blade's starting to get a little bit too dull and you need to switch sides or get a fresh blade. So what I'm going to do, since this is starting to slow down on me a little bit, is flip this blade over and start tapering down the other side. So you can see that we're, we're starting to take a little bit of shape here. Uh, the face obviously looks like it's way out of control. Uh, what I like to do with the face, because I'm going to do a, a face finishing technique, which is going to essentially laminate all this deer hair together and flatten it nice. Um, but in order to do that, you do need to square it up first with a razor. So I'll hold it vertically like this and come in right over the hook eye and trim out. So you can try to get this about as flat as you can before we get to the gluing stage. It'll make things a little bit easier at that point. So once we start to get a little bit closer on our shape, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, do what I've done on some other bugs. And I'm going to just use the, the razor flat like this. I'm just going to go down these hard edges and just kind of start rounding them off by taking small amounts of hair at a time. And so what this is going to do is kind of keep the sides of the body and the belly pretty flat. But it's going to actually just knock a little bit of that hard edge off so it doesn't look quite as boxy. Not that it wouldn't fish just fine without that, but aesthetically I like the, the rounded edges a little bit. So now that we're getting close down here to the collar, I do like to take a pair of scissors and come in. And anytime you see the those butts sticking up, you can kind of sneak your scissors in behind them and trim those out. Nobody wants those in the collar. Sometimes if they're angling back a little bit too much for you, if you grab them and just pull them a little bit, you can actually pull them forward kind of snakes them through the collar so that you can get your scissors to them and trim those out. And if you feel like your collar is too big, you can always take your blade and go back into it just a little bit. You just want to be careful you don't take too much. This one's pretty full right now, so I'm going to take just a little bit more off of it. You can see that we're getting our, our shape pretty well here. Um, I'm going to make sure that we've got just a little bit more space around that hook eye. And again, you want to try to get the face as flat as you can now. It's going to make the gluing process a little bit easier and end up with a little bit better looking end product. 
So now you can see right there, you can see the, the hook eye poking through. You got a fairly flat face. You could fish the bug with a face like that and it would fish just fine. Um, the problem I've had before I started doing this gluing technique was that the face is where you're going to start having damage show on these bugs because that hair will be dinged and folded forward and I just wanted a better way to add a little bit more durability to the face so that's where the gluing technique comes in. Okay so we've got our bug back in the in the vise now we're going to go ahead and glue this face up. The way this is going to work I'm going to first take my fugly packer and just give another little push just to make sure that eye is exposed as best we can get it. And just to throw this out there, the bug is not finished trimmed. Uh, I just kind of get them close before I do the face and then I finish that up after we peel the face off after the bug is dry. So this little material right here, this is found in the baking section of your local convenience store. This is parchment paper. Uh, the cool thing about this stuff is that practically nothing sticks to it. So what we're going to do with our parchment paper, I've got a square here that's a little over an inch by an inch. Take my scissors, I'm just going to kind of poke a small hole right in the middle of it. It's hard to even see right there, just a tiny little hole. And that's where the hook eye is going to go. And we are going to take some liquid fusion glue and we are going to more or less douse the face of this bug. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and take our liquid fusion. And the first pass that I like to make with the liquid fusion is around the kind of the perimeter of the face. You just kind of blotch this stuff on all around the face. And you can put this stuff on pretty heavy. Uh, once we get done with actually getting the glue on there, you can wipe a lot of the excess off. The cool stuff about liquid fusion is as it dries, it kind of shrinks into the deer hair. Uh, so a lot of this is going to kind of disappear on its own. Once you get it around the perimeter, I'm going to go ahead and actually smear some right onto the face, right over the hook eye. And once that's saturated pretty well, we're going to take our parchment paper and we're going to push this right up against the face. Try to line up the hole that you punched in there with the hook eye. And now we're going to take a piece of plastic. And this is, you can find this plastic in almost anything you buy these days. It's just a piece of like the plastic uh, bubble kind of material. Like you, this came from like a pack of batteries, I think. Cut a small square in it, get a hole about the size of the hook eye. I used a uh, cautery tool to kind of burn an oval shaped hole in this one. And what we're going to do, make sure that's lined up with the hook eye again. We're going to push this right over the hook eye. push straight back and as you push back rotate this piece of plastic and you'll see what happens there is this because you've got an oval shaped hole in that it locks it right behind the hook eye so your hook eye is completely completely clear and then I usually take my finger and just run along the edge of this and wipe any excess hair out that you might have and now you get to let this sit and dry which takes a while. The liquid fusion dries within a few hours, but I usually like to let these sit overnight just to be 100% sure that they are completely dry. And what we're going to do now is we're going to skip over to a bug that I tied before I came out to Utah. Same color scheme, same, pa same pattern, and show you what it looks like when you peel this uh, parchment paper off and how we finish the bug up. So this is the bug that I did from home, and this one's been dry for four or five days now so it's obviously plenty dry. So what we're going to do is to remove this plastic disc I'm just going to give it a little, kind of hold on to the bug body just to make sure that nothing moves and we're going to pop this off just like that. So the disc is off and now all we have left on there is the parchment paper and usually if you just start to kind of tug on this stuff you can see that it'll start to, to peel right away from the glue. And as you peel this off, pop this over the hook eye, what you have is an absolutely perfectly flat popper face. So at this point, I like to take a pair of scissors and just kind of go around and trim off some of the excess glue just to get rid of it and I'm not trying to make this perfectly flush to the body or anything yet 
just trimming this extra glue out. And once you get it close, now I'm going to actually go back into hand with the razor blade and finish trimming this up. Okay, so when we go to finish trimming this face up, uh, what I like to do is kind of go along the edge of the face with your blade and slide right along the edge and just try to get that glued, kind of lam I call it laminated deer hair because you've got all that hair kind of glued together. It gets a really nice strong face. Try and just get it just about as flush with the body as you can get it. And again, this is using a, a straight blade. Usually for me, whenever I get to the bottom is when you start getting into a little bit thicker glue for whatever reason. I guess I must not clean it off quite as well. And now you can see that we've got a fairly uniform head there. Perfectly flat when you look at it from the side. Um, this head is going to be real, real nice and durable. It's going to give a nice loud pop when you strip this thing hard. And now that you've got that hair glued together, when fish start biting down on this, you don't have those hairs getting bent forward and you don't have your face starting to get dinged up. So that's looking pretty good on our overall trim job. And you can see we've got our black barring on the back, olive on the sides, our chartreuse on the belly, and our orange face. We're going to go back into the vise one last time. All right, so we are back in the vise. We are just about done with this bug. Um, there's leg pullers on the market. I've tried a couple of them. I tend to like just a regular old sewing needle. Um, I'm going to want to try to shove this through first without any legs in it. I'm going to try and shove it through, not vertically like this, I'm just pointing out where, between these black bars from the side. Usually these will pop through pretty effortlessly. You can see there the needle starting to pop through. So you've got your needle poked through the side of the bug. I'm going to take a full tab of, these are bright orange kind of barred rubber legs, uh, just a pair of legs. On these smaller sizes, like a size 6, I usually just do two legs. On the bigger ones, I might do three or four. I'm going to go ahead and slide this through the eye of this needle. And a trick for getting these to pull through nice and clean is that when you get this through, pull these down so you've got them looped around the needle, give a nice twist. And when you give a twist and kind of cord those up and start to pull through, when you pull tension like that, you see how those pull down nice and tight? They will pop right through. And now that you've got them through, the tension of the deer hair will hold those legs in place. You don't have to add any adhesive or anything to them. And then you can go ahead and trim these to length. I like to just kind of push down on the sides and hold them together so I can trim them pretty even. Those are a bit long. I'm going to take a little bit more off of those. I don't like to get them too terribly long because the longer you get them, the better chance they're going to foul around something. So these are about a little over an inch long on each side. So you can see we got our rubber legs going through each side. And then our last step is to take, these are a six millimeter 3D eye. These are chartreuse. And I'm going to stick these on to either side just using some gel CA. And this is where, for me, keeping the sides of the bug pretty flush, pretty flat, lends itself to just adding a dollop of glue and sticking the eye on and having no problem with them getting ripped off. I used to go through the process of countersinking the eye sockets with a cautery tool or sometimes a wood burner takes time, makes the house stink, makes the wife unhappy. So we're just going to stick these on the side. If you keep the sides pretty flush, put a good dollop of CA on there. I have no problem with these getting ripped off. And once those are dried and set, that bug is ready to fish.